Hello, my name is Michael Chadwick, and today I'll be presenting my work with the Robotic Systems Lab at ETH Zurich. It's titled Vitruvio, an open source leg design optimization toolbox for walking robots. So I'll start with the motivation for the work. A robot is often designed around system level requirements, such as moving from point A to point B in a given amount of time. And the ability of the robot to accomplish this task is in part dependent on the leg design, which is constrained by hardware, such as the actuator constraints, joint limits, kinematic constraints, and more. The design space can be very large, consisting of many interconnected aspects of the design, such as the link lengths, the selected actuators, transmissions, and springs. We find that designers need a tool to help them navigate this complex design space. For this purpose, we present Vitruvio, which is a toolbox to aid designers in navigating this complex design space. So I'll start with walking you through the method overview for the toolbox. So starting at the left with the boxes in blue, this is the trajectory gener generation stage of the toolbox. So we start by defining a robot class and task, which we use with the trajectory optimization framework tower, which is an open source framework to generate trajectories. And we input this trajectory into the Vitruvio toolbox, which is shown here by the green boxes. So first we refine the trajectory and we give a nominal leg design as the input. We go through our design optimization loop and as output, we get a visualization, the optimized parameters and plotted results. So you'll see on the left here, we have the, these examples of different CAD models that we created to extract the inertia and mass properties of the robot. And these are then used to generate the model that the tower uses, the single rigid body dynamics model shown on the right where the black represents the mass and the full body inertia. And then we have here four points for the end effector position and their bounding boxes. This single rigid body dynamics model that we use with tower has the following assumptions. First, the links are rigid bodies. The momentum due to joint velo velocities is negligible and there's a constant full body inertia. So the full body inertia doesn't change at all as the robot is moving and deviating from its nominal stance. We also assume that small deviations in leg design are permitted if they result in negligible changes to total mass and full body inertia. This is because we don't regenerate a new trajectory as we change the design. So we have to allow some small deviations from this nominal design and assume that that trajectory is still valid for our new design, which could have a slightly different mass and inertia. Some application cases for these assumptions they're valid for robots whose leg mass and inertia is small relative to the total mass and full body inertia. So that would be, for example, a quadruped like animal, which has relatively light legs relative to the trunk. Also, this framework is valid for robots with significant leg mass and inertia, but whose legs experience small deviation from their nominal positions and or with very slow moving legs. So this could extend the framework to be applicable to humanoid robots like Digit, for example, for certain motions. So now we're going to define the motion task. So this is defined by the following parameters. We have the start and end positions, the duration for the motion, the terrain, the preferred gait, and the number of phases or steps per leg. And now given our single rigid body dynamics model and the task, we can run tower to generate trajectories. So running tower, we get as outputs the end effector and the center of mass position, as well as the end effector forces. Our next step is to import this data into the Vitruvio framework and to first refine the trajectory data. So we obtain the motion of the end effector relative to the point where the leg is attached. And we can optionally crop the motion so that we consider only a given time frame within that full motion. We can also interpolate additional points in the trajectory and we can average multiple steps into a single step cycle. Next, we define the robot leg model in Vitruvio. So this consists of the number of links in the leg, and we can observe two to four links, the link lengths and the linear mass density, which defines with the link lengths, the link mass, the actuation method. So this could be directly actuated at the joint or a remote actuation via, for example, a chain or a cable the actuator mass, and the end effector mass. Given that task space trajectory, the end effector forces, and the robot leg model, we can calculate using inverse kinematics the joint positions, 
And then from finite differences, we calculate the joint velocity and acceleration. We also take that as an input into our joint torque calculation. So looking at the hind leg, which is in stance phase, you can see there's a ground reaction force FC. For the hind leg, we calculate the stance phase torque by projecting this force FC onto the joints, which we do using the Jacobian. We neglect the joint velocity and acceleration, but include the mass of the joints and the actuators in the static analysis to calculate the joint torque. And then looking at the front leg, which is in swing phase, there are no ground reaction forces, but the faster motion in swing phase means that we can no longer ignore the dynamic effects. So here we include the joint positions as well as velocities and accelerations, and the mass and inertia of each link, actuator, and end effector. And we calculate the swing phase torque using the fixed base dynamic formulation for each leg, which is solved using robotic system toolbox in MATLAB. So now to summarize, we have the joint positions, the velocities and accelerations, as well as the torques for each of the joints. So we could at this stage begin the design evaluation step, but first we can apply some additional actuator models. So first we have the parallel elasticities model. So this would, this would be the inclusion of a torsional spring in parallel with a joint. So the joint torque, which is necessary for tracking the motion, is made up of the sum of an active component, which is supplied by the actuator, and a passive component, which is due to the spring's deformation. Our next actuation model is a transmission model. So the transmission model is applied when the legs are remotely actuated by, for example, a belt drive or cable or chain. This trans transmission decouples the one-to-one -one relationship between the joint and actuator position. And the actuator level torque and speed can then differ from the active torque and joint speed. Now, coming back to our overview, we have generated trajectories and run through the analysis of the nominal leg design. The next step would be to continue through the design optimization loop, but first we'll exit this loop with the nominal design and compare the results to measured data from Animal in order to validate our results. So here we create a trotting motion on Animal at speeds of up to 0.36 meters per second, and we measure the joint data. We then recreate the same trotting motion in Tower, which we use to calculate the joint data in Vitruvio, and then we compare our simulated results with the measured joint data. So now we compare the joint velocity from the simulated results shown in red with the measured data shown in black. And here we're comparing the right front leg, RF, shown on the left-hand side, and the right hind leg, RH, shown on the right-hand side. And we're looking at each of the three actuators, the hip abduction adduction, the hip flexion extension, and the knee flexion extension for each of the legs. The blue patches here denote the stance phase for the leg, and the white patches are swing phase. We compare the same now for the joint torque. And now for the total mechanical energy of all four legs, we find an error of about 1%. And the total cumulative torque for all legs, where we find an error of about 8%. Now, having validated that the framework can produce accurate results for the nominal design, we begin the optimization of the leg design parameters. And we now run the optimization using the genetic algorithm function in the MATLAB optimization toolbox. So the design parameters here can include link lengths, transmission ratios, spring constants, and the spring set point, which is the angle of the spring relative to the angle of the joint. And we can consider multiple cost terms at the same time in the cost function. However, we prefer to consider just one at a time. That way we avoid having to delicately tune the weight of different cost terms against one another. So we'll now consider four different optimization cases for different robots. Firstly, we'll start with the animal platform in a trotting gait. So we start with the nominal design, which has 25 centimeter length thighs for the front and hind legs and 33 centimeter shank. We then optimize this design first for a minimum torque, and we find a reduction of 10% in the cumulative torque over all of the 12 actuators. And we then look at a minimum energy case, and we find we can reduce the energy the mechanical energy consumed by 5%. Our next optimization case is a 40 kilogram monopod robot, which is hopping in place. Again, we start with a nominal design. Uh, we start with equal link lengths, a transmission ratio of one, and we take a first guess at what the spring constant K at the KFE 
should be, as well as setting the spring set point equal to the average position of the KFE joint during the motion. We then optimize again for minimum torque. And now we have these five different optimization parameters. And we find we can actually reduce the minimum torque by 65% relative to that nominal design. And we conduct the same analysis for the mechanical energy minimization, where we find a 54% reduction. Next, we look at a 10 kilogram quadruped robot, which is pronking. Again, we have a first guess at the design, which we call the nominal design, and then we optimize for the minimum torque and minimum energy. Finally, we consider an 80 kilogram quadruped with a torso, so it's an asymmetrically loaded robot, which is climbing stairs. For this robot, we consider only the link lengths and the transmission ratio. We don't include springs. And again, we optimize for a minimum torque and a minimum, minimum energy. And here we consider different designs for the front and hind legs. Now I'll talk about the trends that we observed in these optimization cases. Firstly, for energy minimization, we find that these designs prefer longer links with higher stiffness springs. And longer links generally reduce the joint velocity and increase the joint torque. So there we have kind of a trade-off of these two different metrics. The trade-off here indicates that the reduction in joint velocity is dominant because we found designs that preferred a lower velocity, higher torque in order to minimize the energy. Next, looking at the actuator torque minimization. Here we preferred short links and lower spring stiffness. We found that shorter links generally reduce the moment arm at the joints by maintaining a straighter leg during the motion. Next, looking at the parallel elasticities. So here, the inclusion of the spring at the KFE joint allows for a much greater reduction in actuator torque and energy than is possible with just a link length optimization. And we found that the spring set point was really important to include in the optimization in order to really adapt the spring to that motion and make sure that the spring is as effective as possible. Finally, the transmission ratio parameter. This proved really effective in maintaining the operating region within the actuator limits. Intuitively, for the torque minimization case, we're going to want a transmission ratio which just minimizes this actuator torque. But often we're at the limits of speed of the actuator. And so in these cases, the transmission ratio is actually selected um, sometimes to increase the actuator torque, but in doing so, it keeps the design within the actuator limits for speed and torque. Firstly, our contribution here was an open source robot leg design toolbox for MATLAB, which guides designers from the initial con conception of a robot's geometry and application through to the optimized leg design parameters. We validated the framework by comparison with measured data on the animal platform for the nominal case. And we have presented the design optimization results for a diverse set of robots. Some limitations of this framework. Firstly, the optimized designs are highly task specific, meaning these designs may be optimal for trotting on flat ground if that was the input motion. But if we now want that same design robot to navigate a different terrain, it will not be optimal for that new terrain. Secondly, only small changes to the robot's mass and inertia can be realized in the optimization stage. This is because we don't regenerate a new trajectory given the changes in the robot. So we have to keep those changes uh, close enough to the nominal design that we can reapply the same trajectory. And the designs that we generate when looking at just a single metric, such as joint torque minimization or energy minimization, are generally not very well-rounded designs, meaning that they could minimize the torque but at the cost of having a larger energy consumption. And the real optimal design for a well-rounded robot would probably exist somewhere in the middle of this torque and energy optimized design. In terms of future work, the next step would be to extend the toolbox to include discrete parameters, such as the leg configuration and the number of links as optimization parameters. In the current implementation, these are user design inputs, which are external to the optimization but we could in the future bring them into the optimization so that we have an idea of the trade-off between X and M configuration or two versus three or four link legs.